Hello, in this video we're going to talk about limits and continuity for multivariable functions. So let's recall that back in Calculus 1 we studied limits and continuity and the visualization I'd like you to keep in mind is an insect, maybe an ant, crawling along a function. Okay, so in Calc 1 we had f of x as some sort of curvy line and in this particular picture we've got the ant crawling in, it's coming from the positive x-axis, it's coming from that right-hand side, and we're coming in as x approaches 3 from the positive side, the y value is approaching 4. So we say the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x equals 4. And we could also figure out what's going on if we come in here from the left. If we come in here from the other side, I don't know, maybe that number's, you know, 3.5 or something like that for that y-axis. And so we would say that the limit as x approaches 3 coming from the negative side of f of x well, what happens if we're coming in, we have our little insect coming in, and as the x values get closer to 3, the y value looks like it's getting closer to 3.5. Okay, so this, this is a good case where we've got the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are two different values. The two-sided limit does not exist. So to review, let's say recall that the limit as x goes to a of f of x, that is, that exists, that two-sided limit exists if and only if the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are the same. And then we had some more ideas that we developed in Calc 1 about continuity. Okay, and so we said basically a line is continuous or a, a function f is continuous at some point x equals a if and only if the following three conditions hold. Well, first of all, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit both exist and are equal to each other. Second of all, the function is defined. And third of all, not only is the function defined and the two-sided limit exists, but the value of the function must equal the limit as x approaches a. Okay, so recall we can have all sorts of examples from Calc 1 where maybe the two-sided limit exists but the function is not defined, or maybe the two-sided limit exists and the function is defined but not equal to the limit, but what we're seeking is we are seeking not only does the two-sided limit exist, the function is defined, but the value of the function is equal to that two-sided limit. Okay. So now our idea is to extend those ideas of limits and continuity for multivariable functions. So first of all, let's think about this two-sided limit existing. In Calc 1, we only had two sides to approach because we're working in the plane of our paper. We've got a curvy line. We can only approach a point from the left or from the right. Now in Calc 3, we have many more directions that we can come in towards a, a value. So for example, suppose I gave you f of x, y equals sine of x squared plus y squared divided by x squared plus y squared. And I might want to know what's the limit. So as x, y approach the origin, what is f of x, y approach? Well, let's take a look. So I've got two items that are going to help us here with answer that question. So the first here is a table. And in this table, let's take a look. We've got x's over here, and these are our rows. So x is given in the rows, and then the y, those are given in the columns. So as we drive in towards 0, 0, and 0, 0 is right there in the middle of our chart. So as we take a path where x equals 0, and we let y trend towards 0, it looks like the values are approaching maybe a positive 1. 
And if we come in on the other side where we let y equal 0 and we let x do whatever it needs to do, what's going on there? Well, similarly, it looks like those values are also approaching 1. If we look at this on the chart, let's see, x equals 0. If we hold at x equals 0 and I let y move, right? I'm going to be traveling up along this part of the curve, or maybe I'm coming from the back side, and it looks like the z coordinate is approaching 1. Similarly, if I hold y at 0, and I let x trend in towards 0, it certainly looks like the z value equals 1, and indeed that is the answer. So this is idea that no matter what direction we come in at, even if we came in along maybe a diagonal path or some you know other crazy line, no matter what kind of path we take, our z value as x, y go to 0, 0, our z value approaches 1. Okay, that was great. Now let's look at a different example. Suppose I gave you g of x, y equals x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared. All right, let's look at a table and a visualization. So what's going on here? Let's hold x equal to 0. When x is 0 and we let the y values change, it looks like our z coordinates are trending towards negative 1. Okay, where is that on our plot? Let's see, the x-axis is kind of coming out across the page towards you. So x equals 0 is, is right about there or, or there, depending which side you're looking at. And so if we hold x equals 0 and we let y change, we're traveling right along that valley. Let me write that down. When x equals 0 and then y travels or y changes, y trends towards 0, we travel along a valley. And you can see that value, valley, valley right there. And the z-coordinate looks like it's about negative 1. Now what happens if we come in another direction? If we approach the origin, maybe letting y equal 0, and we trend in that way, it looks like the z-coordinates are close to 1. On our picture, let's see, y equals 0. So if we're going to come in along that path, we're coming in along this ridge and you can see the z-coordinates up there are equal to 1. So let's write that down. When y is fixed at 0 and then we let x trend toward 0, we travel a ridge and our z values look like they're close to 1. In other words, we're getting different values depending on the path that we come in on. And since we're getting different values, this limit does not exist. So when it does not exist, we will write D, N, E. In the next video, I'll show you how to do this algebraically.